Hi everyone, how are you? It is Dr. Splickle, podiatrist, human movement specialist, CEO, and founder of Naboso. So we are going to speak about neuropathy and why I want to do this short tutorial or education series around neuropathy is because this is one of the most powerful applications for the Naboso insoles. This is also the topic of one of our pilots that we're doing right now. So when we think about neuropathy, so we're just going to kind of pull back and this is going to be our education. And then as we do this introduction to neuropathy, causes, symptoms, etc., I'm then going to integrate the power of Naboso and how sensory stimulation is very effective for these patients and individuals. So when we think about neuropathy, what neuropathy is, I'm going to read a definition of neuropathy. So it is the results of damage to our peripheral nerves or peripheral nervous system. And it occurs typically in the hands and in the feet, typically the furthest away from our heart you can think of. So the most distal or from our spinal cord is typically what is the most effective. And then this is associated with weakness, numbness, and pain. As soon as we start to get weakness, numbness, we then start to have a decreased sensation or awareness of the ground or our foot ground relationship. And then that can greatly translate to decreased stability, uh, decreased balance when walking. And then of course that contributes to a fall risk. So there is a quick statistics for diabetes and diabetics with peripheral neuropathy is that they are 15 times greater at risk of a fall compared to someone same age with diabetes, but not peripheral neuropathy. So just kind of think of that and put that into context. If you have a 15 times greater fall risk, what can you do? What can they do to decrease that fall risk? And then our goal at Naboso is to help them feel their feet again. If we do not feel our feet, our foundation, the way it's contacting the ground, this is obviously going to translate to poor stability. Now, we, when we think of neuropathy, there are several types of peripheral neuropathy. We'll, we'll go first kind of the causes and then we'll go into some of these subsectors or subtypes of the nervous system. So different types of peripheral neuropathy. This is going to be diabetes. Diabetic related neuropathy is probably one of the most common. Now here in the United States alone, there's over 20 million adults in the US who are living with neuropathy. A majority of those are diabetic peripheral neuropathy, but we also have a really high statistics of chemo-induced peripheral neuropathy. And when you look at the research, there's actually a uh, prevalence or to stick to statistical trend at one in four people who are diagnosed with cancer and undergoing chemotherapy will experience some sort of neuropathic symptoms. A lot of people will say that those are reversible, but unfortunately, a lot of patients and individuals with chemo induced peripheral neuropathy, they end up not having it reversed. Some other types of peripheral neuropathy are going to be vitamin deficiencies. This is a common one that people might think of. There's different autoimmune or what's called small nerve neuropathy. There are other medical conditions that they're related to. So MS, there's an MS induced or associated neuropathy. And then of course you have idiopathic, which means there's no known cause. Typically that presents a little bit different from other peripheral neuropathies. And then we still see even though you might be a little bit surprised, we still see a decent prevalence of HIV and AIDS related peripheral neuropathy. Now, when you think of kind of this, uh, another subsector of the types of peripheral neuropathy, we have three main ones. So we have motor neuropathy, sensory neuropathy, and then we have autonomic neuropathy. So in someone, a majority of the peripheral neuropathies that are out there are purely sensory based. So it means that the sensory nerves are what is being affected either from oxidative stress, inflammation, maybe toxicity in the case of chemo related, but it's going to be the sensory nerves that are affected. Obviously we have sensory nerves bringing information in and then we have motor nerves bringing information out or that's kind of the muscle contraction. In some individuals, they can have a motor neuropathy. A example of a combination of sensory and motor neuropathy is Charcot-Marie-Tooth. 
So CMT or Charcot-Marie Tooth is one of the classic sensory slash motor neuropathies that are out there. And that will be characterized by a muscle wasting that is associated with this and obviously weakening that can affect balance, posture, and gait, just like the sensory neuropathies. Now, real quick, the autonomic neuropathies, you actually see this with a high prevalence in diabetics. And this is going to result in disruptions of the autonomic nervous system. So what the autonomic nervous system controls, we often think of that as fight or flight or rest, digest. Those are autonomic functions based off of our breath and things like that. But your autonomic nervous system also controls things like sweating, circulation to the skin, microvascular function. So some of the autonomic neuropathy symptoms that I see as a podiatrist is I will see dryness of the skin. They start to get kind of a flaking and a thinning of the skin. This of course is uh, compounded by decreased circulation, decreased numbness, ulcer risk, things like that. Some other autonomic neuropathies could be skin color changes where it will go from purple to red to white and kind of it's, it's unnerving to the patient, but those are autonomic changes. Pain perception also can be an autonomic function. Okay, but the classic type of peripheral neuropathy that I want to focus on right now and through the rest of this video is going to be on sensory neuropathy. That sensory neuropathy could be related to diabetes, autoimmune, small nerve, idiopathic, chemo related. It could be one of those. Okay, but we want to think of it the same. Now, the main symptoms of what's associated with neuropathy, we can break this down into two main types. We either have positive symptoms and we have negative symptoms. Now, when I say positive, that does not mean like good symptoms. It just means that there's a increase of a sensation. And then the negative symptom will be kind of like the void of the sensation. Positive symptoms with sensory neuropathy are going to be stabbing pain, radiating pain, um, burning, like things are kind of um, bugs are crawling up the legs, hot, cold, things like that, that are uh, this uptick in sensation versus negative symptoms are going to be the void of a sensation. So that's going to be tingling and numbness. A lot of symptoms or a lot of patients or individuals with peripheral neuropathy will have both. So they'll have numbness in their feet or tingling, but then they also get this burning and sharp radiating pain. Or some people will just have negative. Some people could just have positive, okay? So we want to really differentiate. Now, if you have ever heard of some of the neuropathy medications like gabapentin, which is also Neurontin, or Lyrica, which is also pregabalin, those medications, the purpose of them is to mask the positive symptoms. So they're uh, most easily explain that they're trying to trick the brain so the brain doesn't perceive that positive or upregulation of a symptom. They do absolutely nothing for the negative symptom. And the negative symptom, the numbness and the tingling, is the symptom that has really this huge, profound movement impact. It creates this disconnect with the your foundation. So when you have numbness and tingling, you can't feel your feet. So that negative symptom has this trickle down profound effect on balance, posture, and gait. What do you do for those patients, right? I can't give a medication that is necessarily going to help them feel their feet again. That's not the way that pharmaceuticals work and the way that this disease is managed. So that is really where Naboso comes in and we use our textured insoles to then build that foot awareness because there's certain medications that are controlling the positive symptoms. So let's look at the negative symptom, numbness, tingling, and the effects on movement. And that's the place that Naboso comes in. So I just really want you to understand some of that, that important difference and um, 
determining factors of what is positive, what's negative, where would pharmaceuticals come in, and then what do we actually do for the tingling and the numbness. One of my other recommendations that I do for patients when I'm wearing my podiatry hat is that I'm a huge supporter of vitamins. So vitamin supplementation for peripheral neuropathy is really looking at the root cause of this. In diabetic neuropathy that is typically inflammatory and oxidative stress, you are taking supplements that are decreasing inflammation in the body, decreasing oxidative stress, and upregulating nerve growth factor. So some of the big ones that I just, I recommend, I'm not recommending kind of general because I haven't evaluated to anyone who's listening, but just something to, to check out and learn a little bit more is acetylocarnitine and alpha-lipoic acid. These are some of the most researched supplements around increasing nerve growth factor for those with peripheral neuropathy to then decrease the numbness. So my goal typically with a patient is can I decrease the numbness by upregulating your nerve growth factor? Have you used the Naboso insole so you can feel your feet? We're turning the noise up to the sensation coming through the feet. And then that is going to have the greatest effect on your quality of life, your day-to-day experiences. So now I want to talk real quick about the different symptoms that you can have. Now I know that I mentioned that we have positive symptoms and negative symptoms, but there's actually two different types of nerves that are found in the bottom of our feet. There are myelinated nerves and then there's free nerves. So two different types of nerves. Uh, For anyone who maybe is a, a medical professional or personal trainer, someone who's in allied health, the myelinated nerves have a kind of this insulation and they're every so many distances And essentially the signals through the nerve jump from each of those um, myelin sheaths. So there's a nodes of Ron Vier in between and it, so anything that is myelinated essentially is fast. Okay. They're fast nerves. They communicate quickly because the signal can jump, 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 jump from those different islands is what we'll say. Okay. Versus free nerves. Free nerves do not have myelin around them. So the communication or the signal has to go across the entire nerve. You could think like the telephone wire, okay? Timing of signals are different. Both of these nerves are found in the bottom of the feet, but someone who has a sensory neuropathy may have a disruption in myelinated nerves, but not in the free nerves. So this is where you want to understand some of the different signals. I don't want to make this overly complicated, but this helps you to understand if a patient or you yourself may not feel temperature. So maybe I can't feel if something is hot or cold, but I can feel the texture of the Naboso insole. And you're like, how how do I have that if I have numbness in my feet, right? Or I don't feel pain, I don't feel sharp versus dull, but I can feel that the Naboso insoles, or I can feel vibration, right? So everyone's experience with peripheral neuropathy is slightly different and different nerves are affected at a different rate. This is where we have seen some profound effects with the Naboso insoles is that you may have a patient or an individual who has numbness in their feet and cannot feel temperature or cannot feel pain in their feet, but they can feel the Naboso insoles. We still tell people, even if you have numbness, you are not numb to every single stimuli that's coming from your feet because half of those nerves are myelinated and the other ones are free nerves. So that's what I want you to think about as well of where we can start to stimulate and challenge. Another great thing when it comes to the nervous system, both the peripheral nervous system and the central nervous system, is this concept of neuroplasticity. So neuroplasticity is where you push and you challenge the nervous system and then it adapts, it's plastic, it continuously shapes. In the central nervous system, you have new synapses that are constantly being formed and then you can get function back. 
So we have seen some of our users use the Naboso insoles, use them chronically, and actually have this improvement in their sensation. We've also had some anecdotally tell us that they've actually come off of their medication. They no longer take gabapentin or pregabalin, which is super powerful because there's so many side effects to these medications. So what I want to do for the next couple of minutes as I wrap up is speak about what can we do for the individual with neuropathy who wants to keep moving? They want to maintain their balance and not just kind of succumb to this diagnosis or to the experience of peripheral neuropathy and don't push themselves anymore. So these are going to be my recommendations and these are my recommendations for patients who want to keep moving. Can they do barefoot stimulation? If the nervous system is plastic, we want them to stimulate their nerves, right? That's the same thing, right? I challenge my mind by doing crossword puzzles and things. Same thing. So I need to get out of my shoes. I need to get on a surface that's gonna stimulate my feet. I need to bring vibration into my nervous system through my feet. So what we wanna make sure is that when that individual's training barefoot, the environment is clean. We have a designated area or we pre-check that area to make sure that there's nothing sharp, it's clean, the, the individual who can't feel their feet won't feel if they step on something sharp. So it's our job to make sure that it is clean. Okay, we can check the feet before and after the workouts or our, our sessions or our rehab session. We want to focus on foot engagement. So even though I might not feel my foot contracting, my foot is contracting. Remember, we're dealing primarily with sensory neuropathy, not a motor neuropathy. So we want to focus on foot engagement. That's short foot exercise. Get those intrinsics firing. And then use other strategies of how we maintain balance. If I can't feel my feet, I have to turn the noise up to the sensation coming in. That's the Naboso product line. Get into the insoles, got onto the, the Naboso mat. Bring this stimulus into the nervous system. Outside of texture, do uh, trigger point release. So research has shown five minutes of trigger point release to the bottom of the foot shows an immediate improvement in balance and stabilization. So I would do five minutes trigger point release. We have the neural ball at Naboso, which is perfect for that. Use the Naboso insoles or go onto the mat. And then I love vibration. So a whole body vibration platform or be on a surface that is natural wood and when they step, it'll naturally vibrate for their nervous system. And then think about the other input systems. What are you doing with the eyes? What are you doing with the vestibular system? Eye muscle exercises or eye movement exercises is profound at improving balance and stabilization. Challenge the vestibular system. What are you doing? Turning that head. Get the vestibular system because it is your primary stabilizing mechanism against gravity. Your eyes, your proprioceptors, your feet, powerful, but your vestibular system is the primary stabilizer against gravity. And then hack the nervous system with your hands. Hold something that is textured. Okay, stimulate these guys. Hold a ball that's vibrating. So the hypersphere or something like that. Put pressure, make a fist, get them involved with the rest of their nervous system. And then that's really going to help these patients and individuals stay connected to their nervous system. As we wrap up, what I want to do is encourage you to learn more about the different types of peripheral neuropathy, these differences in symptoms, does your client or you yourself have positive versus negative symptoms? What are you doing to address those negative symptoms? Because that's what's affecting a lot of our movement and our day-to-day -day quality of life. And then look at and understand different products that can increase the stimulus into the nervous system. Challenge your nervous system. Don't just succumb to that peripheral neuropathy diagnosis. You've got to challenge it so it can grow stronger. Remember neuroplasticity. And then finally, as we wrap up, we are doing a neuropathy pilot at Naboso. So we are doing a six-week study 
and we are now almost done with it, where we have 50 subjects who are using the Naboso Nero insole. And what they're doing is they're wearing the insoles for a minimum of 30 minutes a day. Now, after just one week of use, so 30 minute use one week, we had over a 90% increase of these 50 subjects with varying types of neuropathy say, yes, I feel my feet more. And then of them, 72% said, yes, I feel more stable when I walk. Now, these are subjective. This is the patient or the individual saying that to us. But a subjective perception of stability and confidence when moving is a huge mitigator of fall risk. So I will take a subjective response from a user saying, yes, I feel my feet. Yes, I feel more stable. But what we're doing to further validate our insoles at Naboso is we've just partnered with Hartford Healthcare and the MS Mendel Center, both out of Connecticut. And then we have a call next week with Sloan Kettering in New York City to all kickstart neuropathy-based research studies to understand what we are seeing with our users and then really get some data behind this, spread the word. And then my goal is to get it covered by insurance so these patients have no excuse. They have access to these insoles. I really want to thank you guys for your time. If you want to learn more, please visit naboso.com. And if you want to learn more about how I look at patients in podiatry, you can always look at my podiatry website, which is dremilyspiegel.com. Thank you guys so much. Have a great day.